Electromigration is one of the most popularly known reliability issue in uh, modern VLSI design. And uh, since knowing reliability is very much needed for understanding electromigration, uh, I have added reliability and electromigration into this single video. So let's concentrate on reliability. A device is said to be reliable if it performs intended operations under a given set of conditions uh, or its scheduled time. Modern VLSI design uh, takes an approach to design a chips for mobile devices and many other consumer electronics and uh, business applications. For these cases, uh, they design it to work uh, and to last for 10 to 20 years. Okay, so but this cannot be used for overall uh, in all the applications. For example, uh, satellite communication and uh, many other applications like space programs uh, need a longer duration there are satellites which work for more than uh, what i just explained maybe 10 or 20 years so they need a longer term right in critical applications for example medical applications and uh, automotive industry in those applications uh, the reliability becomes very important right it's not just a market differentiator it, it's the critical aspect of safety right so if it if the chip doesn't work the entire automobile doesn't work right the medical equipment doesn't work so it's very very much important that we uh, ensure the reliability of a chip that it works in its life cycle right so the measure of reliability is called mean time to fail i want you to remember this term mttf which is mean time uh, to failure since this is the measure of reliability it's the mean time that it can uh, fail right the average time of failure two types of issues one one is related to manufacturing uh, problems and the other one is physical design problems which are uh, which need to be taken care at the uh, design phase of the chip right so manufacturing phases physical corrosions due to leakage or uh, any other reasons like uh, moisture or something and uh, electrical leakage package encapsulation problems and loose bonding these are the reasons why it can fail uh, because of manufacturing uh, defects right and there are one more there is one more problem which is called as uh, physical design problems uh, physical design reliability issues which are electrostatic discharge uh, electromigration and hot carrier effect and negative bias temperature inversion or nbti so one of these is electromigration it's the most popular one okay let's understand why it is and what is electromigration so by definition, electromigration is a phenomenon where gradual displacement of atoms or ions happens from their lattice points due to momentum transfer from the electron flow. Okay, so so how does it happen? So if we want to visualize it, so before that we need to understand that electromigration is mainly happens because of current density higher the current density more the problem of electromigration so if there is a thin wire which conducts a lot of current then it will definitely eventually have this electromigration issue so one thing we need to remember is electromigration happens gradually it does not happen all of a sudden or in one day or something it it takes years to do so so the atoms or ions will move from their position so if you see this uh, picture that i have drawn so the if you take if you see these red ones these are actually electrons just assume these as electrons because electrons are not completely particles if we go and uh, learn about uh, quantum mechanics they behave differently so just assume there's electrons as particles now so they hit uh, these copper atoms right let's assume that this is a copper metal so these copper atoms are sitting or ions are sitting um, in regular pattern okay so these if if the current density is very very high trans hitting to these uh, atoms they transfer their momentum it transfers momentum to the copper so it exerts that force so that uh, causes the copper atoms to move from their lattice points it doesn't happen so we understand that it doesn't happen so easily if the number of electrons are very large so that electron wind hits these um, it, it, it pushes these atoms gradually not uh, all of a sudden right this is a real scenario 
right where electromigration has happened here so they call this as void it can create the electromigration can create void and hillock this is called a hillock when the atoms or ions uh, starts to migrate this becomes thinner the region where the uh, region from where the atoms move becomes thinner and once it becomes thinner more current flows and the region heats up and that causes localized heating and that again increases the uh, flow uh, the rate of electromigration we'll see what and all causes electromigration in few moment so that increases the rate of electromigration again the temperature right so the temperature increase so that increases the electromigration more and that creates this kind of a uh, void and eventually if this region breaks down it may create an open and here it may create a short with some other net which is nearby right so electromigration is mainly related to i average and uh, not i peak and i rms i have already explained it and it's one of the very important things so, so we understand why it is so right only unidirectional current can cause this electromigration right but there are cases in advanced ac signals also uh, can cause electromigration so if we take this mean time to failure equation of electromigration uh, we refer to mean time to failure uh, when we were discussing about reliability if you remember so it has a constant a from manufacturing technology and uh, we see that the current density has an exponential relationship with we with uh, the mean time to failure as the current density increases it exponentially reduces the time for failure right it, that is similar with the other uh, variables also the ea which is actually activation energy is related to the property of the metal that is being used before 250 nanometer technology node uh, they used to use aluminum as the metal for interconnects but it solely depends on uh, um, the feasibility of manufacturing technology and many uh, other reasons because of uh, its conductivity and its usage so they used to prefer uh, aluminum but later after 250 nanometer in uh, advanced technology nodes be, uh, below uh, 250 nanometer they are using copper as the interconnect uh, metal so copper has uh, better conductivity and it has uh, better susceptibility to electromigration as well right uh, so it has high activation energy that's one property of uh, a copper so because of activation high activation energy uh, it is uh, having better susceptibility to electromigration right and the below are the boltzmann constant kb and the temperature t and that temperature t is a function of two temperatures one is t reference and one more is the self heat temperature so uh, you can understand that because of uh, in advanced nodes we are introducing fin fets fin fets are associated with the self heat so they have more self heat uh, than the bulk planar transistor that we we were using before so because of that the problem of electromigration is uh, increasing rapidly right so if you take a look at this current density is also proportional to capacitance of the wire and the voltage which is applied to the cell or uh, the voltage difference right which is vcc and vdt and the width and the height also the frequency and switching probability so we need to remember that this is one of the interview questions so capacitance the current density is related to capacitance so higher the load capacitance is the current density increases so you shouldn't have higher load capacitances in that case again you have to use wider uh, wires so uh, unless you use wider wires it becomes a problem right so it, it depends on voltage also and frequency and switching probability Be considering these uh, factors we can say that there are some techniques to reduce the electromigration but this results in um trade-off between the per performance and area so we are either uh, trading it with um, area or performance right so we can widen the wire right if we increase the width of the wire uh, the current density will decrease so uh, we can reduce the current density and definitely reduce electromigration 
right so we can reduce the frequency but again it's the performance uh, issue we are going to reduce the performance we're going to reduce the speed of the uh, chip or we have we can reduce the switching probability that is related to the logic so again something can be done so that switching probability can be decreased lower the supply voltage but that again causes the performance issue right it will reduce the uh, speed of operation and keep the violin short this cannot be always done this can be done in some times but there are cases where we use global interconnects we cannot make the length shorter because of placement constraints so and one more is reduce buffer size and clock lines and etc but we may produce weak drivers a big buffer driving one single and very thin line uh, interconnect is not a good idea because it will have a lot of current flowing through that thing so it may cause electromigration issue and one more uh, problem where electromigration usually happens is in vias because many wires may inject uh, current into one single via so that will introduce problem with via it, it, it acts like a fuse it can be avoided by having multiple vias like if we have multiple vias they act like parallel um, uh, base of current flow so it becomes like a parallel three pipes instead of using one pipe we use three pipes in water uh, supply something like that right so it, it helps at lower technology nodes uh, people were only worried about actually the clock nets and the power nets so power nets and clock nets were highly considered because power nets usually drive everything and the clock nets uh, will have a lot of switching probability and uh, it will be having higher frequency of operation right so because of this the current density will be higher but nowadays the normal signal wires also has to be considered for electromigration because of many other problems like cell feed and other things right so it's an important thing and these are the ways that we can reduce the electromigration in our design but anyway it's always a trade-off between power performance area which we call ppa right okay that's all for now i'll see you in the next video thanks a lot for watching bye bye